This video is an introduction to adrenal insufficiency. The adrenal glands are retroperitoneally located superiorly to each kidney. They are composed of two functionally distinct units called the medulla and the cortex. The central medulla constitutes 10 to 20% of the gland. It synthesizes and secretes catecholamines, which modulate the body's sympathetic response to stress. Excess medullary production is seen in pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma, diseases not covered here. The cortex composes 80 to 90% of the gland and is divided into three functional zones, and diseases are classified on the basis of whether there is hormone deficiency or excess. The zona glomerulosa secretes mineralocorticoids, or aldosterone, which regulates sodium and potassium homeostasis. The zona fasciculata secretes glucocorticoids, most importantly cortisol, and the zona reticularis secretes six steroids, primarily androgens. Cholesterol is a substrate for the synthesis of all steroid hormones. The rate-limiting step is the conversion to pregnenolone via the enzyme CYP11A1. Pregnenolone is then converted via different enzymes to different steroid precursors. The enzymes include CYP17 and CYP21A2, whose deficiency can lead to congenital adrenal hyperplasia. These pathways end with the synthesis of aldosterone, glucocorticoids, or sex steroids. Aldosterone is the primary mineralocorticoid. It is stimulated by ACTH, but angiotensin II via decreased renal perfusion and potassium are primary stimuli for aldosterone release. Aldosterone functions in the distal convoluted tubule to increase intravascular fluid volume, which in turn increases cardiac preload and therefore stroke volume. It does this by reabsorbing sodium across the interstitium. Potassium and hydrogen ions are excreted in return. With sodium, water passively follows. An additional function of angiotensin is arterial vasoconstriction, increasing vascular resistance, blood pressure, and cardiac afterload. Cortisol is a circadian released hormone produced only in the cortex and stimulated only by ACTH, which can be increased during stress. It has varied action throughout the body, but a primary role is to act on liver, adipose tissue, and muscle to stimulate the formation of glucose, gluconeogenesis, and indirectly to break down glycogen called glycogenolysis, all of which increase glucose in the body. Cortisol activates anti-stress and anti-inflammatory pathways by altering some of the substances seen here that mediate inflammation. Cortisol prepares the immune system to respond to harmful stimuli as well as to downregulate the immune response to restore homeostasis, helping to cope with long-term stress. Production of sex steroids starts with DHEA, the most abundant adrenal gland product. In the adrenal glands and in some peripheral tissues, DHA is converted to more active sex steroids shown here. Testes produce nearly all of male testosterone. In women, most testosterone is from the adrenal glands. Androgen conversion to estrogen occurs in ovaries and in adipose tissue. Before discussing adrenal insufficiency, recall the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Production of CRH stimulates the pituitary to produce ACTH, which induces the adrenal cortex to produce the mineralocorticoid aldosterone, the glucocorticoid cortisol, and the sex steroid DHEA. Recall that ALDO is stimulated from ACTH and from factors outside the HPA axis. Cortisol absolutely relies on ACTH stimulation alone, and DHEA is also produced outside of the adrenal glands. Primary adrenal failure is most commonly caused by autoimmunity or tuberculosis, but also from CAH, hemorrhage, adrenal leukodystrophy, infiltrative disease, or metastases. There is mineralocorticoid deficiency and subsequent electrolyte and volume problems cortisol and glucose metabolism issues, and variable androgen loss depending upon the patient's gonadal function. Negative feedback increases ACTH and causes hyperpigmentation from increased melanocyte stimulation. Secondary adrenal insufficiency is often due to hypothalamic pituitary disease, exogenous steroid use, chronic illness, or medication interference. There is decreased ACTH, but aldosterone is preserved due to renin-angiotensin stimuli. Cortisol is reduced and can be restored by ACTH administration. Androgen depends on gonadal function, and there is no effect on MSH. Symptoms and signs of adrenal insufficiency depend upon rate and extent of loss of function, whether mineralocorticoid production is preserved, and the degree of stress. Acute adrenal insufficiency is a life-threatening emergency, and the major hormonal factor is mineralocorticoid, not glucocorticoid deficiency. The major clinical problem is volume depletion and hypotensive shock. Patients often have additional nonspecific GI symptoms, weakness, fatigue, fever, lethargy, and confusion or coma. The biochemical features result from mineralocorticoid deficiency, inappropriate secretion of ADH from cortisol deficiency, and glucocorticoid deficiency. 
Adrenal crisis requires urgent diagnosis and intervention. Don't delay treatment while diagnostic tests and workup of precipitating illnesses are performed. Goal is treatment of hypotension and reversal of electrolyte abnormalities with aggressive fluids while assessing volume status, followed by glucocorticoid therapy with dexamethasone if the diagnosis has not been made. Otherwise, hydrocortisone is preferred. Clinical features of chronic adrenal insufficiency are vague and nonspecific. Differences from primary adrenal insufficiency reflect the difference in pathophysiology. Dehydration, hypotension, and electrolyte changes are less common, reflecting aldosterone presence. GI symptoms are less common, but hypoglycemia is more common. Hyperpigmentation is not present because ACTH secretion is not increased. For case detection of a chronic adrenal insufficiency, given the circadian rhythm, the first step is to check an AM cortisol. Follow-up of a low cortisol is to perform a cosyntropin stimulation test in which ACTH is injected to see the adrenal response at 30 and 60 minutes later. Treatment of chronic adrenal insufficiency depends upon the level of the defect. Glucocorticoid replacement can be done with either hydrocortisone, often preferred because of its short activity and is more physiologic, or prednisone, sometimes preferred because of its simplistic once-daily dosage. Mineralocorticoid replacement is only given with primary adrenal insufficiency. DHEA replacement is not established and likely unnecessary. Additional considerations are increasing steroid intake during illness or procedures or when unable to take PO and wearing a medical bracelet.